All right, good afternoon, um, everyone um, attending this session. Uh, I'm Danud Chiroa. I'm the prof I'm professor of law and dean at the Faculty of Law, the University of Cape Town. Um, welcome to this event, uh, especially to prospective students um, who would like to know about uh, the law programs that we have. Uh, my main aim now is to convince you to choose law studies, um, not other uh, um, um, uh, programs the university offers, and to do so at UCT. Um, as I will, I will speak uh, for um, a few minutes, you are um, 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 welcome to pause questions in the chat um, 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 facility that we have. Um, the answers uh, will be given as far as possible uh, with uh, members of the faculty that I'm with, um, but also uh, some of them um, would be posed uh, to me, um, then I'll respond. But so you can pose these questions as we go, um, um, as I go through this slide, um, this presentation. Um, so the real question is why should someone choose law, not engineering, not uh, humanities, uh, not uh, health sciences, uh, not sciences. Uh, why should one um, study uh, law uh, and why should one study law at UCT? I'll start with the first question, answering the first question. Um, um, law is a very fascinating uh, field of study and 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 I can speak for myself uh, because I've studied uh, law for more than uh, 25 years. It is a vast field. Practically every field of law is uh, legislated. Every aspect of life is legislated, is uh, regulated. You can talk about medicine. You can talk about education. You can talk about business, politics, uh, uh, organizations, you know, companies, um, uh, states, uh, relations between states, relations between the individual and the state relations between individuals per se, all of these um, are regulated. So it's really a fascinating field. It is a field that you keep uh, learning about and there's growth uh, of the field all the time. Laws are enacted all the time, uh, not just in one country, in all countries of the world. Uh, at the international level, at the regional level, um, we have laws. So it's something that once you get into, you're bound to be fascinated about uh, for the rest of one's life. Um, and, and, and it's just endless. There are always cases in the courts. Parliaments are always meeting. Uh, Policy makers are always thinking about ways of regulating better, improving service delivery, improving business conditions, conditions under which uh, people work, uh, conditions under which people um, do business, trade, um, um, a lot of that. So, so it's something that is, uh, that catches one, one's curiosity for the rest of uh, one's life. And, and there's a lot of scope for um, uh, um, specialization as well. So at the beginning, the LLB will be general. Uh, it will introduce uh, students to key aspects, the main aspects of the law, uh, which will put them uh, on a pedestal to specialize, um, to practice, uh, to uh, engage in uh, general practice, but also uh, very uh, specialized or highly specialized uh, practice. So. Um, this is a field that one cannot get bored uh, with, unlike maybe other fields where people um, get bored because of doing the same thing. Uh, I will not mention some um, um, of the fields which I think are kind of tedious and after a while one gets uh, bored with. Now, that's about the discipline itself. It's, it's, it's something that is interesting. It deals with real life issues. It's not just there are some aspects of it that are theoretical, but much of it is quite practical. So students, once they get into it, they learn about things that are happening all the time. Uh, current things that are taking place uh, in the country, 
um, in Cape Town uh, in their lives as well. They can see how uh, the law uh, impacts them directly and they will have the opportunity to resolve real life problems uh, during their studies. Now, the uh, other reason why uh, law is a study, uh, field of study that is interesting and that you must uh, choose is because of what it can do to the person who studies it. It's a profession that is bound to stay for um, uh, years to come beyond our generation, uh, beyond many generations to come. It's a field that is not bound to die. As I've said, all aspects of life are regulated. So this is something that will always be. There will always be need for lawyers in the world. As long as we live in society, as long as we live um, in states, uh, we are organized people, we are social beings, the law will always be there and there will be always room for lawyers. This is not the case with other disciplines where developments happen so quickly and they get, become redundant. Uh, they become over uh, superseded by uh, new fields um, or new developments, technology and all of that. Um, this is not bound to happen with the law um, because it, it will always be there. So we have the traditional legal field um, as well as the um, uh, non-traditional. The traditional consists of the mark, the market of, for the traditional field of law consists of the lawyers in practice, lawyers in government service, then the magistrates and of course the judges. Um, of course, we also have the um, uh, um, uh, educational, legal education itself, which includes universities. So this is the uh, kind of field um, um, which uh, in which uh, students go into once they graduate. They will go into practice. Um, in practice, they can be attorneys, they can be advocates, they could also be legal advisors, they could be conveyances, conveyances, conveyances. Uh, um, uh, what they do is to transfer, to prepare documents, uh, transferring property from one person to another, whether it is land, whether it is houses, um, that's what they do. They also draft um, um, legal documents, uh, whether it is wills, lawyers draft wills, um, um, lawyers draft contracts, um, business deals, um, memoranda, laws, uh, all of that is done uh, by lawyers. So the, that's the traditional. So if one works hard, graduates, they have lots of uh, options to choose from in terms of work uh, and the market will always be there. Beyond South Africa, there's an international market. Uh, regional organizations need lawyers, uh, organizations such as the United Nations, um, which is a huge field uh, dealing with all aspects of international relations from international criminal law, international trade law, international human rights and uh, hardcore international law. Um, um, there is a World Trade Organization uh, which deals with um, trade, international trade. Um, we also have uh, the International Labour Organization. There are many organizations where um, lawyers and our students have uh, uh, gained employment in those organizations. But there's also the non-traditional legal field, which includes the NGO sector, it includes uh, general business, uh, community, politics, um, uh, governance, all aspects um, of life uh, that you can think of where lawyers uh, can be found. Um, so, so one doesn't have to practice law. Um, one can um, do many other things uh, with law, including starting one's own business, um, as it were. Um, um, so, 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 so is there, there is that. And because of this, um, there's, and because of what um, uh, law is about, one can have an opportunity to make a difference 
in the world, not just at the personal level, because this is a field which can um, be very useful and productive for one, uh, beneficial to one, um, in terms of uh, financial sustainability, financial um, reward at a personal level, um, um, and security as well. One can become very rich um, because of practicing law, um, uh, whether as a, a, an attorney or an advocate, um, but one can also be very influential uh, in terms of um, impact uh, beyond one's family. Um, one can become uh, an advisor, one can become an influential person, uh, occupy positions of power in society, such as leadership. And of course, in South Africa, um, at least two of the presidents uh, since uh, 1994, um, 93, 94, uh, are lawyers. The current president is a lawyer himself. Um, we've had lawyers lead international organizations uh, in Africa. Um, Kofi Annan is one of the most influential people uh, from this continent uh, to have occupied uh, um, the, the position of Secretary General of the United Nations uh, for probably 10 years. Um, it allowed him, gave him an opportunity to influence world affairs in a very fundamental um, way. Uh, and that's because of the study of law. It, it put him in that um, um, position. So one can be very influential um, um, both uh, locally, but also uh, internationally. Um, so, so, so this is a study that is, um, uh, this is a field of study that is bound to have a reward at a personal level, but also at a, at a, uh, on a large scale. Why would one want to study at UCT? Um, um, this is obvious, uh, I think, I guess, but I need to mention it. We are the top university in South Africa, but also in, in, in Africa, uh, because we have um, leading scholars um, who teach. Um, we have scholars who do research, groundbreaking research, which, in fact, which is used um, or which um, uh, puts um, its academics in a position to teach um, material that is relevant, that is current, and that is useful to students. Um, so, so with the leading scholars that are available, uh, students are exposed and challenged um, to be better, to become better. Students will have an opportunity to work with leaders in their field um, and, and, and to interact with them and, and be challenged to become better. We also have facilities, um, the facilities needed for the study of law. We have a, a, a very huge library, law library um, on middle campus. It is open only, accessible only to law students. We have our own campus and building where students interact. Um, and, and we have also, apart from the undergraduate student body, we have a large postgraduate student body, which also students at the undergraduate level interact um, with. So um, this is the right place for students to study. We have seen um, with the emergency that we had um, since 2020 to now that uh, law faculties must be able to adjust very quickly uh, and be uh, innovative in the face of challenges. And, 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 and because of uh, COVID, um, 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 we had to really change the way we teach. Most universities reacted um, uh, very late. We were able to adjust very quickly uh, to offer uh, the law program in a different way. We have continued to do that and we had very few glitches along the way. So we this year we we'll have graduates um, because uh, law graduates because um, our law program was not disrupted as much 
as um, um, uh, was expected by the COVID uh, restrictions. So you have to uh, consider the state of law very seriously. It is open to anyone. Any person can study law. Um, and 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 all that, all that it requires is hard work. There's a lot of material to to go through. But any person can study law from any field, whether one is a scientist, um, whether one is um, more attuned with the humanities. Any person with any background can study law. Um, there are some things that will be learned along the way, such as discipline, coping with a lot of volume, uh, problem solving. Um, um, reasoning, you know, logic, all of those things are things that can be learned, uh, but anyone can do well and study law. I think I've uh, spoken uh, for maybe 25 minutes. Um, there might be some questions that um, have been posed. If there they, they, they are some questions, I would like to know, Gabby, whether um, they have been answered or you would like to pause to me. Dean, uh, we are busy um, responding to as many questions as we can in the chat. I think most have been answered. Um, one of the uh, questions that has come up um, a few times is the matter of the different LLB programs that we offer, but we're encouraging people to join us for the session after this, um, where those uh, degree streams and the details of entry into those and um, will be discussed in quite a bit more detail. Um, some of the questions are around the NBTs and whether um, applicants are required to write the national benchmark tests um, in applying to UCT um, and the answer that we've given is yes all applicants are required to write both the academic literacy test and the quantitative literacy tests. Um, I'm not sure about the other faculties, but I think pretty much across the board, um, UCT requires the NBTs, but certainly law does. Um, there have been some interesting questions around whether uh, graduates with an LLB are able to, um, like at what point they might specialize, and also about what other career options there are that are open to, to graduates with an LLB. Uh, and for that, we've um, answered that uh, certainly law, a law degree is not just for lawyers, that there's a wide range of career options open. Um, and in fact, one of the features, I suppose, of the law degree is this idea of transferable skills. So, for example, you would develop very strong writing skills, very strong analytical skills, strong research skills through your, your law degree. Um, and those you can take into you know, a wide range of careers. So we, in fact, um, I saw an article recently in the media about a law graduate, one of our law graduates who became a pilot. So, I mean, there really, there really is a wide range. Um, but certainly as far as law careers go in South Africa, there are plenty of options. Um, and we've provided a link to the Choose Law booklet in the, in the responses. Uh, so th those are really some of the main ones. I think there probably are a lot of questions around um, entry requirements, but again, we, you know, we will definitely be addressing those specifically in the session to follow. Um, and perhaps my colleagues also on on the session have any have other things to add. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, Patricia. I've got nothing to add, Dean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, the 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 options, career options are endless. There is a huge law market, legal market, as I have said, and most of the graduates get into that. Some uh, prefer to not to go there, and they are able to do many things, um, both nationally and. Um, internationally so 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 it does equip the law degree equips students with the skills needed for them to do many other things um in fact at a personal level i mean we are contracting all the time whether we're buying a phone airtime and whatnot there are all these online things that are happening now um and just having that knowledge uh, uh, of the law uh, it can be very beneficial uh, at a personal level 
even if one doesn't want to um, engage in the law um, uh, uh, profession um, further than that, but but we just have a market. So we also, uh, as a faculty, receive a lot of graduates from other disciplines who want to get into the legal profession. So they join uh, the, the LLB or some postgraduate programs where the LLB is not required um, as a prerequisite. So, so, um, so, so um, one can enter the law directly through the LLB or after another degree. Um, um, that is also very much a possibility. Um, so, um, I don't know whether there are any other questions, uh, but but um, the, the the about the law streams. There will be a session on this. Uh, we have uh, what might appear to be a complicated um, LLB programs, uh, you know, uh, which are several streams, and and and. But the the good thing about it, uh, and this will be explained in a later. Um, uh, session. The good thing about it, it brings together students from quite a diverse background. So there are some with uh, law degrees, up to the, some degree, other degrees, whether it is humanities, commerce, um, medicine, engineering, anything that one can think about that get into the program. There are students who come straight from a trick um, um, with different um, uh, backgrounds, international, students from the Western Cape, students from uh, KwaZulu Natal, throughout the country. It makes up for a, a very good learning environment because to study the law and understand it pro uh, properly, one has to look at it from very different perspectives. And having such a diverse body of students and also being exposed to a very diverse body of staff um, helps to read the law in different ways to be creative about what the law is and can be uh, and what it can do. So, so all of that um, uh, is made possible by attracting the best students to campus, to this campus, attracting the best academics to this campus and putting them together in a way that uh, promotes um, scholarship and quality teaching um and and inside for discussion so um we also have a lot of traffic of international scholars coming in um, and those two interact with students we have a large body of alumni very prominent alumni who also um, come back to participate in our events and activities and relate with uh, our students we have, you may have spoken already with, or maybe later, uh, you, may, you may have listened to our students, uh, leaders. Um, um, there are so many organizations uh, that uh, students uh, um, uh, founded and run. Um, we encourage that kind of original uh, student-led activities um, um, because uh, that's how they can become leaders. Um, already engaging in communities uh, within the university, but also outside the university in order to make a difference in the world. Um, I wonder whether there are any further questions? Um, there have been a couple of questions, Dean, about whether international students need to write the NBTs. Uh, so uh, students from Namibia, for example, but also students who've, written, who've written the non-NSC matric. Um, so, for example, Cambridge A levels, or I, th I think that the question might apply also to um, the um, independent matriculation board exams, those kinds of things. So, if the faculty office could perhaps respond to that. Sorry, apologies, Dean. The NBT results are only to be written by students who write the South African matric. Okay. So, inter international students, in other words, don't. Um, all right, there's a different system of admission for international students, yeah. Yeah, we can speak more about that in the second session, I think. But um, for now, only South African matric students. If you are an international student writing matric in South Africa, you must do the NBTs. All right. 
Um, any other question, Gabby? That you. Uh, there are quite a few, Dean. Um, so th there's a lot of questions been asked quite a few times around uh, what kind of maths you need for law. Um, and we've shared that there aren't any specific subject requirements and you can apply for uh, to do an LLB with maths lit or maths literacy as, as it's known. Um, so that's been a, a common question. Uh, someone's asked when applications end, so if my understanding is correct, please uh, correct me, faculty office, that is um, on the 31st of July, at the end of July, so they open um, April, May, June, July, you've got four months, but uh, you have till the, the, I think the middle of October, um, but please check that on the NBT site, you have until the middle of October to write the NBTs, so you can apply without having your NBT results, and those would then get submitted to the university afterward. Um, if I'm incorrect on any of that, faculty office colleagues, please um, clarify. Thanks. That is correct, Gabby. Thank you so much. Um, folks, we do have to close off the session now and move on to the next session. Um, and you're welcome to join us there and we'll, where we can answer your administrative questions a lot more clearly. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure speaking with you. And um, yes, do attend the next session because it's technical. It's about uh, admission requirements, the kinds of LLB streams that can be chosen. Um, you, you, uh, if, just one moment to, to say, if uh, a student does not gain admission to law, they gain admission to other programs, they can still study law at a later stage if they want. Uh, after the first degree. It's not a uh, trend smash. In fact, we encourage the postgraduate entry points as well, uh, in addition to the straight matric entry to the LOV. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon.